Hi, I'm Jamie Lewis, and welcome back to TheBasis.net. We're continuing forward in this whole intro series called The Basics, and today we're gonna to be talking about technique, namely right-hand technique. So don't go anywhere. I guarantee you're not gonna to wanna to miss this. So before we get too far into this, let's just talk really briefly about what technique is. Technique is the how behind what we're doing on a bass guitar. How am I accomplishing these musical feats with just my hands? And also, what kinds of things can I be doing to make it easier, more comfortable, or even just possible to begin with? I firmly believe that, that good technique is the shortest path to excellence. And it's gonna kinda help you dodge the temptations of bad habits. Bad habits that can stunt your growth on the instrument, prevent you from progressing any further, and potentially cause serious chronic injuries over time. Okay, so what does good technique look like on a bass guitar then? Well, that depends on what kind of bassist you are. Um, do you use your fingers? Are you a finger style player? Do you play with a pick or do you use your thumb? Each of those techniques is gonna have a different sound, a different tone, a different vibe for the music that you're playing. Actually, a good way to think of it is like, like visual art. What's better, watercolor or oil painting? or charcoal versus ink or pencil or whatever? I mean, the answer is none. I mean, they all look great, it's just they're different. So applying that to music, some of these techniques are gonna sound great on certain songs and in certain genres, certain styles of music, while another technique may outshine that one just depending on a totally different set of parameters. So it really just depends on what kind of music you're making. Honestly, I recommend that you learn all of them that way, you kind of have everything at your disposal, and depending on the song or the playing scenario or the genre or whatever it is, you know, you have all the tools that you need. However, if there was just like one golden rule that would apply to all of these techniques, it's this right here. As often as you can, try to keep your wrist straight. It's not gonna be possible 100% of the time. Sometimes you're gonna need to bend your wrist or kink it in order to reach certain strings or you know whatever the passage requires. But as often as you can, don't let your wrist bend, but instead, keep it straight. And the reason why is because bending the wrist constricts blood flow, so you're actually handicapping yourself by clamping down on the veins that are trying to get blood to your fingers. You're actually making it harder to be flexible and fluid when you do this, so really, you're working against yourself. And this can even lead to long-term injuries like wrist pain and even carpal tunnel just from keeping your wrist bent for extended periods of time. So just keep all this in mind as you're practicing and performing. Maybe every once in a while, just look down at your right hand and your left hand and make sure that your wrists are straight and allowing proper blood flow to your fingers. So in other words, if you look down and you see this in your right hand, which a lot of bass players do, well, you wanna change that to look more something like this. Okay, so having said all that, let's just jump right in. The first technique that we're gonna study is finger style playing. And the idea here is I'm just gonna strike the strings with either my first, my second, or my third finger. Playing with your fingers has a very round and natural and full sound to it. And actually, I think it's a great place to start if you're new to the bass guitar. Because, I mean, well again, it sounds so bassy. There's basically two ways to strike the string when playing finger style. That's by using either a rest stroke or a free stroke. Now these are terms that I've borrowed from our cousin, the classical guitar, but they can be applied here as well. Essentially, I can either pass my finger through the string and rest on the previous adjacent string, or I can lift up my finger each time freely and stop midair rather than resting. You'll notice that they sound pretty different. The rest stroke has more oomph to it, more bass and a more fuller sound, while the free stroke is a bit more airy or lighter in tone. And I can manipulate these two techniques by toying with my dynamics as well. If I play soft and just brush my fingers against the strings, well, we hear a light, airy tone. I can play with moderate pressure and get a full, round tone. Or I can really dig in and get the strings to snap and pop. I 
I could also put some more throw or travel in my fingers to get more attack, sort of like the sound you might get when playing with a pick. Now when it comes to finger style playing, we need to do one of two things with our thumb, and that's either anchor it somewhere or let it float. Anchoring means that the thumb rests somewhere on the bass, like on the pickup or on a dedicated thumb rest or on another string. And floating means the opposite of anchoring. The thumb doesn't hold you down at all and moves with the hand as it travels up and down the strings. Now there's advantages and disadvantages to both of these scenarios. The benefits of anchoring is, well, that you don't move. You stay put, so it's just one less thing to worry about, and it's quite comfortable. But once you start doing string crossings, it actually jacks with your muscle memory. Think about it. If you've spent hours playing with this kind of hand spacing right here, you're committing a lot of time and effort to what this feels like. This feels comfortable. This feels right. This is how it's supposed to be. But if I need to play a line that crosses over into a higher string, well, look at that right there. My hand is way wider than it was a second ago. And that might cause me to make mistakes because I've clocked in so many hours with a closer finger spacing. So if you allow your thumb to float at all times, you can maintain that exact finger spacing that you've developed into your muscle memory. I mean, you spent hours working on it, so why not use it as often as you can? So that's the benefit of floating thumb, is it guarantees fluidity and kind of makes it the best option in the long run. Now, as far as how many fingers to play with when, when you're plucking finger style, most people just use one or two or three. Uh, the pinky is the only one that's kind of impractical just given how much shorter it is than the other ones, but I've still seen it done. Now, as far as how to alternate your fingers, well, you can do it really however you want. If you're a two finger player, you could go one, two, one, two or two, one, two, one. I'm personally a three finger player, so I go two, one, two, three, two, one, two, three. But I've also seen people go three, two, one, three, two, one, or one, two, three, one, two, three. Really, it's just whatever's comfortable for you. Or if I'm trying to play really consistently, I'll just use one finger. And the reason why is because well, your fingers are shaped different, right? They're not the same thickness, they're not the same size, and so they'll actually have a different sound against the string. So if I want something that's unpulsed or unaccented, and I just want every note to sound the same, well, then it makes sense to use the same finger every time. The last thing we need to talk about here is raking versus alternate picking. Alternate picking is where each note is struck by a different finger, alternating however you'd like, no matter what note or finger came before or which one comes after. Whereas raking is a technique that allows one finger to drag across two or more strings. This can be beneficial for faster passages because it allows your right hand to work less when crossing strings. Now one thing that I think is worth mentioning is that sometimes raking the strings can actually cause you to trip up. Think of it like this, uh, imagine comparing running to playing a game of hopscotch. Remember when you were a kid and you played hopscotch in the schoolyard? Running is easy. It's just right foot and then left foot. Which one comes next? Well, if I'm on the right leg, the left leg comes next. If I'm on the left leg, well, the right foot comes next. I don't have to think about my steps. I just have to think about where I'm going and my legs take me there. It's a no-brainer. However, a game of hopscotch, that's like a footloose tongue twister where sometimes it's a skip and then others it's a hop and then three rights in a row followed by a left and you have to spin in a circle. Like, it gets confusing and that can cause you to make a mistake. So musically, alternate picking, well, it's straightforward. You just finger one, then finger two, then finger one, then finger two. Like, I don't have to think about it. I just run. I don't have to think about what I'm doing. I just think about where I'm going. Okay, so now that we've covered finger style bass playing, let's talk about playing with a pick. Some people love the sound of a pick on bass guitar. It has a bit more of an aggressive sound to it than your fingers do which actually makes it perfect for a lot of genres of rock music. 
it naturally has a really like snappy, almost clicky sound to it, which can help it cut through the mix in certain genres. And it's also a more consistent sound, given that it's just one shape and one material, unlike your fingers, which are not the same shape and not all the same thickness. Uh, so it's easier to get a consistent dynamic and attack when you're playing with a pick. I can think of two basic picking techniques that I use. Essentially, the motion either comes from the wrist or from my arm. If I'm trying to play faster passages, it makes more sense to play from the wrist because I have less muscle tissue to move. Move less means play faster. But if I'm trying to play heavier or just appear more acrobatic on stage, I use the weight of my arm, either from the shoulder or from the elbow, to really lay into the string. Now you can hold a pick however you'd like, but personally, I like to pinch it between the tip of my thumb and the side of my index finger while keeping the other fingers open and loose. I personally play a normal sized D'Addario heavy pick, but that doesn't mean that I couldn't get a great sound out of a medium or a big super heavy pick or anything else. Another really common right hand technique when playing the bass guitar is using your thumb. Probably one of the most notable is slap bass. <laughs> And I'm not really gonna go over slap in depth in this video, there's tons of tutorials at thebasis.net teaching you about slap technique. So if you wanna learn more about that, just go to the video section, go to technique and you'll find them. But we can also use our thumb in correlation with the palm to get a really interesting sound called palm muting. Basically, we just lay the edge of our palm ever so gently on top of the bridge saddles and then just use the thumb to plug the strings like this. You can also use this palm muting technique when playing with a pick to achieve a similar sound. Now, as far as when to use these techniques, when is it finger style versus playing with a pick or a slap versus thumb or whatever it is, I'd say context is always key. Playing bass isn't about always do it this way or Jocko did this, so you can't do that. You know what I mean? I'd say, if it sounds good, go for it. If it works in the song, do it. So if the song you're playing requires a lot of attack and aggression, maybe you're better off using a pick. But keep in mind, the pick has a thinner sound to it, so you may find yourself going to the amp and dialing in more low end because, you know, your sound's too thin. Or you could just remedy that by just playing with your fingers and attacking the strings a bit harder. Or maybe you just wanna slap the strings and get a more percussive sound out of your bass. I don't know, it's totally up to you. But I'll say this, if you listen, if you just listen to the song and adjust your technique to best fit that song that we're playing right now, you're gonna find that you have no shortage of work. I can guarantee you that. So that's it for today. I mean, believe me, we're just scratching the surface on right hand technique here, but this is more than enough to get you started if you're new to the bass guitar. So if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't done so yet, please subscribe to the YouTube channel so you can get more great videos just like this one. And also check out my free weekly podcast called The Basis Podcast. You'll find it wherever podcasts are streamed. And make sure you come back next week when we start talking about left hand technique here at thebasis.net. Hey, if you like what I do, please click on the subscribe button right here. And if you really like what I do, then click over here to see how affordable it is to join me at thebasis.net. But if you just want the free stuff, then click here to check out whatever YouTube's sophisticated robots think you should watch next. I'm sure they know what's best for you.